Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a look at some rules for the curl. So in this case we have an example where we have the curl of f times the vector a is equal to f times the curl of a minus the cross product of a and the gradient of f. Well, let's see if that is the case. We're going to do that by using an example. The example is that the f is equal to 2xy squared, so it's a function of x and y, and the vector a is equal to minus y in the x direction plus x in the y direction. So using those two examples, can we show that the left side equals the right side? It's not a proof, it's just an example, and it gives us some feeling of how to work with this. So first, what we need to do is we need to take f times a. So when we multiply f times a, we get the following. So on the left side, we'll start with the left side first. We're going to multiply f times the vector a, which is equal to 2xy squared times minus y in the x direction plus x in the y direction. And so what we do here is we multiply this times each of the two components. And when we do that, we get minus 2xy cubed in the x direction, and we get plus 2x squared y squared in the y direction. All right, that's f times a. Now we need to take the curl of that. So the curl of f multiplied with a vector is equal to you have the x direction, y direction, z direction unit vectors, the partial with respect to x, the partial with respect to y, and the partial with respect to z. And in the bottom row, we have the product of f times the a vector, which is what we have over here. So we end up with minus 2xy cubed, and then plus 2x squared y squared, and a zero. Now we're ready to take the curl. So first, we say that this is equal to the x unit vector times the partial derivative of y, the partial of derivative with respect to y of zero, which of course is zero, minus the partial derivative with respect to z of this, which of course is also zero, minus the y unit vector times the partial derivative with respect to x of zero, which is zero, minus the partial derivative with respect to z of this, which is also zero. And finally, plus the z unit vector times the partial derivative of x, uh, the partial derivative with respect to x of this quantity right here, which gives us 4xy squared minus the partial derivative with respect to y of this quantity, which gives us minus 6xy squared. Minus 6, that's minus times a minus 6xy squared, like this. And so the minus and the minus negate, so this is equal to 10xy squared. So the left side of that equation, this equation right here, when we plug in uh, this for the function and this for the vector a, we get 10xy squared. Now, if we do the same on the right side using exam the same function and same vector, and we work the right side out, we should get the same result. Let's find out if that's the case. All right, first of all, we're going to take the curl of A. So let's take the curl of A. And so now we're working on the right side. I want to keep track of that. Right side. And that's going to be equal to the x unit vector plus the y, well, not plus, of course, the y unit vector and the z unit vector in the first row. The second row is going to be the partial with respect to x the partial with respect to y, and the partial with respect to z. And in the bottom row, we're going to put in the components of the vector a, which is minus y and plus x. So minus y and plus x, and this is a zero. All right, we'll do the same thing again. This is equal to the x unit vector times the partial derivative. Where are we here? So we're going to cross that out. The partial derivative with respect to y of zero, which is zero, minus the partial derivative with respect to z of x, which is also zero minus the y unit vector times the partial derivative with respect to x of 0, which is 0, minus the partial derivative of z with respect to, uh, the partial derivative with respect to z of minus y, which is also 0, and then finally plus z unit vector, and here we have the partial derivative with respect to x of x, which is 1, minus the partial derivative 
with respect to y of, of uh, minus y. So that would be minus 1. So let's see here. That would be minus 1. So we subtract minus times the minus 1, which is equal to 2 in the z direction. All right, let's see if I got that right. So we have the uh, z unit vector times the partial derivative with respect to x of x, which is 1, minus the partial derivative with respect to y of minus y, which is minus 1. So minus times and minus plus. Yeah, just want to make sure I got that right. Don't want to make arithmetic errors. So now we have this. Now we're going to multiply apply that times the f function. So f times the curl of the a vector is equal to f is equal to this quantity right here which is 2xy squared times the result of the curl which is 2z unit vector and that would be equal to 4xy squared whoop, y squared in the z direction so this is what we have for this quantity right there all right so let's just label that. Let's just put a little one in here, and that's a little one there, so we can keep track of it. Now we're going to tackle the second term. And first, what we want to do is we want to find the gradient of f. So the gradient of f, that's going to be equal to x unit vector times the parcel with respect to x plus the y unit vector with the parcel with respect to y plus the z unit vector with the parcel with respect to z. And that's multiplied onto the function 2xy squared. All right, so now let's find the gradient of f. This is equal to the partial derivative with respect to x of this, which is 4y. Uh, no, that would be 2y squared. So it would be 2y squared in the x direction plus the partial derivative with respect to y of this. Well, that would be 4xy plus 4xy. And then that would be in the y direction plus the partial derivative with respect to z, which is 0 in the z direction. Let's see if we get this right. The partial derivative with respect to x, that would be 2y squared. With respect to y would be 4xy. Yes, so there we have it. So now, when we take a look at what we have over here, now we want to take the cross product with the a vector in the gradient of f. So now we have the cross product of the a vector and the gradient of f, which is equal to we have the x, y, and z unit vectors. Here we put the components of a, which is minus y, x, and 0. And here we're going to put the components of the gradient of f, which is 2y squared and 4xy and 0. Now we're ready to find out what that's equal to. So this is equal to the x unit vector times x times 0 minus 0 times that. So it's 0 minus 0 minus the y unit vector times minus y times 0 and 0 times this, which is again 0 minus 0 and plus z unit vector times minus y times this is minus 4xy squared minus 4xy squared minus the product of those two, which is plus 2xy squared. So that's minus a 2xy squared, like this. And so that means that that cross product is equal to minus 6xy squared in the z direction. There we go. So that's the second term right here. It's the second term, which is what we have over here, second term. So now what we're saying is that this curl, the curl of f times a, is equal to this first term minus the second term. The first term is equal to this, and the second term is equal to this. So now we can say that the curl of <coughs> f times the a vector is equal to the first component, which is 4xy squared in the z direction, minus this second term, which is a minus 6xy squared in the z direction. And of course, the minus times the minus negates, so this is 4 plus 6, which is equal to 10xy squared in the z direction. Now, is that the same that what we got for the result of the left side? The left side, we got this, 10xy squared, 
Oh, I forgot something in the z direction. <laughs> Can't forget the component. And then here we got the same thing, 10xy squared in z direction. And sure enough, they're both equal to each other, which means that at least in this case, using this example, that the curl of the function times the vector a is equal to the function times the curl of a minus the cross product of a and the gradient of f. And that is one of the curl product rules for vectors. And that's how we can show at least that in this case it does work out. Not a proof, but it's a good exercise to get familiar with how to do this.